This is a printmaking tutorial in which I'm going to use a jelly plate to make these moonlit seascapes. The full classroom workbook for this project is available in the video description below. Included in the workbook is this project tutorial with detailed instructions and pictures, as well as preliminary drawing and painting worksheets and a two-page self-evaluation worksheet. A jelly plate is a gel printing plate that has a soft, smooth, gelatin-like surface texture that's perfect for printing fine textures with ink and paint. To start you need some cardboard. Here I'm using an old manila folder. It doesn't really matter what kind of card it is, you could use regular cardstock, just as long as it has quite a smooth surface and is around about 200 grams in weight. Begin by drawing a range of hill shapes around the edge of the piece of card. Try to vary the height, width and overall shape of each hill to give your image some variety and make the landscape look more natural. Now you can roughly cut out each hill. Cutting the card into smaller pieces will make it easier to cut the hills accurately. Then you can cut all the hills out neatly. Next I'm going to do the same with another piece of card that has a texture on it. This one has a crisscross texture, almost like a canvas or a fabric weave. This particular card is scrapbooking card, but some acrylic papers and canvas papers will also have this texture. When it prints, you can see the texture, and this creates some tonal variety in the image. Now I'm back to the smooth card. The next step is to make a feature or a focal point for the landscape. Here I'm making a sailboat by sketching and cutting out a hull shape. Then trace the hull onto another sheet of card and cut out the top edge. This is a single hole punch that I'm using to punch along the top. Now I'm cutting out the strip of holes. Because I trace this boat shape from the other, the strip fits perfectly along the first hull and I can cut any shape from it and know that it'll fit the original shape. This is just an example of what you can make for the seascape. You don't have to copy exactly what I'm doing. Perhaps you want a different kind of sea vessel, or a sea creature, like a dolphin or a whale, or maybe even a sea monster. The point of this project is to try and capture the essence of a moonlit landscape. What actually features within the landscape is completely up to the artist. One tip to keep in mind though, is to try and layer the pieces of card. I've already added extra layers of the hole punch strip and the thin strip onto the hull of the boat. Now I'm adding another feature of tiny rectangles, which will form a third layer of shapes on top. And then I'll be creating the same layering effect for the sails. The layering of card is key to the success of this technique and will be quite effective. So whatever you choose to put in your landscape, make sure it has a few layers for best results. Now I'm cutting a piece of card for the water. I'm cutting it 15 by 27 centimetres to fit the width and about three quarters of the height of the jelly plate I have, which is 20 by 25 centimetres. Put the card on a soft surface like a piece of fabric and use a ballpoint to draw some waves. 
You need to press quite hard to emboss a line into the card in order for the lines to show up in the print. That's why I'm working on a soft surface. Think about creating depth and perspective with the water. Here I'm drawing the wave lines closer together at the top and then gradually spreading them further apart as I move down the page. This is to try and suggest distance, as if the water is receding into the background. You can see how hard I've had to press with the ballpoint by these lines on the back. Now I'm going to assemble my landscape, starting with the objects that will be the furthest away. These will be the mountains that are behind the horizon line. So I'm gluing them behind the card that is the water. Obviously the boat will be in the water, but I'd like the sails of the boat to go above the horizon line so they contrast against the night sky. Here I'm using a scalpel to cut a wavy line into the water. Now I can insert the base of the boat into the cut so that it'll look like it's actually floating in the water. You can add some tape to the back to make it more secure. Now to add rocks to the foreground. Again, you need to work from the back to the front. So stick down the rocks that are the highest and furthest away first, then overlap them as you move down to the front. This will add to the sense of perspective and distance in the landscape and make it look like the rocks are coming forward. The textured card will print darker than the smooth, so insert a few of these in amongst the rocks to create a bit of tonal variety. Use the larger rocks in the background and add some smaller pieces to the bottom of the plate. The next step is inking the plate. For this you need a rubber roller and lino block ink. I'm using water-based black lino ink, or sometimes it's called block ink. Block ink is thick and sticky and has a slower drying time, which gives you time to work back into the plate. I don't really recommend any other type of ink or paint. Only lino block printing ink works well for me. Roll the ink all over the plate. Make sure it's nice and black and covered evenly. When you're rolling the ink on your plate, try your best not to let the roller tip over the edges and mark the area around the plate because this can get on your paper when you print, so pay attention as you roll near the edges. Flip the cardboard plate over and position it onto the jelly plate. Cut out a moon from the smooth card and place it into the sky. Then cover the whole sky section at the top with a piece of soft fabric, like a piece of felt or similar. Cover the whole thing with a scrap piece of paper and rub it all over with your hands or with a clean roller. You need to press quite firmly. The idea here is that you want the card plate to pick up the ink off the jelly plate and leave an impression in the ink. Now you need to remove everything from the jelly plate. And you can already see the impression that's left in the plate. You need some bristle brushes for this next step. I'm not using any water for this, just wiping my brushes occasionally on a piece of paper towel. You could actually pull back a print now, but I'm going to add highlights by removing ink from areas of the plate. In the version I do for juniors after this, I actually skip this step, but the print still works. So to add extra highlights, start by carefully wiping the areas back with the brushes. You need to work out where the lightest areas of the image will be. Of course, the moon should be the brightest, so I'm starting with that first. Think about the direction of light. If the moon is beaming the light, 
it must be the light source. So that tells us where the highlight should be. Any surfaces and areas facing the moon will be the lightest. So I'm going to remove the ink from those places. So if I look at this rock, I'm going to remove the ink from the side that's facing the moon. And I'm going to follow that rule all over the image. It's a good idea to have a couple of different size brushes so you can get into the fine areas, like these sails. I'm also going to remove some ink from this area of water under the moon, so it looks as if the moonlight is reflecting off the water as well. Now I'm using cotton tips to add to the highlights. The cotton tip will remove even more ink than the brushes. So wherever I wipe the cotton tip should be almost white when it prints. Use a new tip once the end becomes too inky. Again I'm thinking about which surfaces in the landscape are facing the moon and removing the ink from those. To pull your print from the jelly plate, lay down a fresh clean piece of paper. I'm using drawing cartridge. Again, rub the back all over with your hands or with a clean roller to push the ink into the paper. And peel it up. And there's your print. Younger years can also have a go at a modified version of this technique that still produces quite effective results. So you ink up the plate in the same way, but instead of making a plate, I'm going to layer all the pieces directly into the wet plate. It's important to note that it's much easier if you have all your shapes pre-cut and ready to go. This time I'm going to work from the front to the back, or from the foreground to the background. This is super important as your shapes need to overlap each other the right way so it looks like the objects are receding into the background. Again I'm using two types of card, one with the crisscross texture and the other is smooth. Now I'm going to add a boat, but this time I've made a much simpler boat out of basic shapes. And I haven't glued it together, I'm just laying the shapes into the ink. But you could glue it together if it makes it easier for you. Then I'll add the moon to the night sky. Now I'm using cling film for the water. So this is a little different from the first project. Pull the cling film so the folds go horizontally and this will look like waves. Now the water line is down, I can add some mountains into the background. So these will look like they're behind the water line. Then lay the felt or soft fabric over the top area. Lay a scrap sheet of paper over the top and rub it all down. Make sure you rub firmly all over. Now it's just a matter of removing all the pieces from the plate. Do your best not to touch the plate or you might leave marks and fingerprints. So you'll notice I haven't worked back into the plate with the brushes and cotton tips like I did in the last project. I'm just going to skip straight to pulling the print. And you can see that it still works pretty well.
You can also take a second print from the same plate. This is another plate I made. This is the first pull. Then I didn't re-ink the plate. I just laid another sheet over the top and picked up the ink that was remaining. And now I have a paler version of the first. Once the ghost print dried completely, I used watercolours to hand colour it. This particular project is but one of a huge variety of printing techniques and processes that jelly plates can be used for. The plates themselves are fairly expensive, so for a classroom you may only be able to afford a few. But if you look after them and you don't use sharp objects on them, they can last a long time and be used over and over. In terms of printing with a whole class, for junior years I think it's better to print with a small group and set an independent task for the rest of the class to work on. For this reason I've included some independent drawing and painting worksheets in the course book below. Thanks for watching and thanks for making it to the end of this video.